All right, guys, we are going to add to our notebook about our points of concurrency. So in our table of contents, um, on this top line here, we're going to write points of concurrency. Um, and we're actually doing that on some of these same pages. So I'm still going to put um, 52, I think, to 50. Six. Oh no, this one's gonna go to 57, and then I'm gonna like put more specific pages down here. So if you remember, a point of concurrency is where three lines meet at a common point. So if I have two lines intersecting, like that's fine, but that's not as unique or specific or rare as three lines meeting at the same spot. Like that's pretty hard to do that you get that three lines all cross at the same spot. So when that happens, um, that's really important and that's really fun. And so those points sometimes get special names. And one of the ones we're gonna talk about some more today is circumcenter. And that one is on 52. Um, also, the in center is on 52, and so we're going to go fill those out. Then we had our centroid and our orthocenter, and those are going to both be on 54. Now, on 57, that's where we're going to do some practice, although probably not in this video. So that's kind of the plan we're going to do, 52 and 54. So if we turn the page to 52, we've actually already done this one a little bit because we talked about perpendicular bisectors. Now, if I draw all three perpendicular bisectors, then they will meet at a point of concurrency that we call the circumcenter. So this point right here is called the circumcenter. And so some unique things happen here. Um, when we have all of the perpendicular bisectors, um, this point of concurrency right here, this circumcenter, is the center of a circle that can be drawn. And I know that you might not be able to draw a circle as good as I can right here because I have this tool, this compass tool. Um, but it's a circle that can be drawn kind of around the outside of the circle and I'm doing kind of a crap job but <laughs> the circle is going to end up going through each of the angles of a triangle although again this isn't doing a great job I didn't measure it super great um, but what that means is because the circle can go through all the angles of the triangle like this what happens is I can draw a radius from the circle center to the angle of the triangle, and all radii are congruent. And so that means if I were to walk from the circumcenter of a triangle to the angles of a triangle, then I would always walk an equal distance. So point D is the circumcenter of ABC. Um, that means that BE is congruent to AE, and that's because we constructed perpendicular bisectors, and so these parts are the same. Also, AF would be congruent to CF, again, because these lines that we drew were perpendicular bisectors, and CG would be congruent to BG because it's a bisector. And that's helpful because we kind of get these little congruent triangles in here that shows me that these, and I mean really they're right triangles, these hypotenuses would all be the same. So the distance from the circumcenter to the vertices is congruent. Again, that's saying if I were to walk from A to D or C to D or B to D, I would always walk the same distance. And again, like I was showing you guys, there's a bunch of these little triangles that you can get. Um, so triangle A, E, D, this little triangle here, would be the same as B, E, D. Oh, darn, I forgot my little triangle symbol. 
So like these two that share this perpendicular bisector side, um, as well as AFD and then CFD. So again, the ones that share that perpendicular bisector side. And then lastly, at the bottom here, BGD, so this triangle, and then CGD. So that also helps me to see like that the hypotenuses of all those right triangles would be the same. It is equidistant. The circumcenter is equidistant to the angles, which is kind of cool and like really helpful because if stuff is equal, then I can set equations equal to each other and solve for things. Not only that, but the circumcenter is interesting because when I do draw these perpendicular bisectors, and I'm going to kind of sketch them out here, um, depending on the type of triangle, the circumcenter might end up in different places. So when I have an acute triangle, um, if I draw my perpendicular bisector, again, just kind of like sort of eyeballing this, so cut it in half perpendicularly, cut it in half perpendicularly, and then cut it in half perpendicularly, my circumcenter is inside the triangle when I'm acute. When I'm right, so again, cut in half perpendicularly, cut in half perpendicularly, and then cut in half perpendicularly. When I have a right triangle, what happens every time is that your circumcenter ends up on the side of the triangle, specifically the hypotenuse, so on the triangle. God, gross. There's flies in here. It's so disgusting. And then lastly, when I have an obtuse triangle, um, if I construct all my perpendicular bisectors, boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. What always happens is that your circumcenter ends up outside of the triangle, which is okay because, again, still, if I walk from the circumcenter to an angle, I'm always going to walk the same distance. And those are all the same, like boop, boop, boop. So, kind of cool. Now, if I have instead perpendic uh, instead of perpendicular bisectors, the angle bisectors, when all three of the angle bisectors are constructed in a triangle, I instead get what's called an incenter. So an incenter is where the angle bisectors meet. Now the incenter is also kind of fun because it gets a circle as well, except so this circle is outside going through the angles. This circle is inside. And so really what it's like touching or going through uh, are the sides of the triangle. Again, I'm doing a terrible job. Oh, that's not so bad. So again, like this circle should be touching all the sides and your girl tried, but it's hard to be perfect in these. So basically, if I were to walk the shortest distance possible, which would be a perpendicular distance, from the in-center to the side of a triangle, I would always walk the same distance. And again, that's because really it's a radius of a circle and all radii are the same. So again, because um, the in-center is made up of the lines um, that are angle bisectors, that means that angle EAD is congruent to angle FAD. Because again, angle bisectors cut an angle in half. Angle FCD would be congruent to angle GCD. And then angle GBD would be congruent to angle EBD. 
because again we're talking about angle bisectors so when all the angle bisectors are drawn we get the in center which is point d and if we walk that perpendicular shortest distance from the in center to the sides then um, all those measures are equal so it's not necessarily where the line intersects so i'm going to give this a new point right here and i'm going to call this z and this one h and this one w because it's not really necessarily where it crosses through the side um, like the angle bisector crosses through the side um, it's always that perpendicular distance so d z h d and then d w i really should have put w d and z d oh well now the in center because it's creating the circle inside will always be inside the triangle no matter what type of triangle you have so when we have an acute it's inside and again if you think about it right we have our angle bisector angle bisector and again i'm just kind of eyeballing this i could measure with a protractor um but i mean that would take a lot of time and i'd have to cut the angle in half and all that good stuff um when it's right it's still going to be inside so again if i cut this angle in half so 45 and 45 cut this angle in half just eyeballing it and then cut that angle in half and then same with obtuse in an obtuse triangle it'll still be inside and again it always has to be inside because that inside circle it's a good way to remember it so cut in half cut in half I could have used, used a straight edge cheese cut in half so no matter what inside all right so that's our circumcenter in center next we have on page 54 our centroid and our orthocenter so the centroid is where the medians meet so when I draw all the medians of a triangle they meet at what we call the centroid and so if we take a look inside here point D is our centroid and that's again because BE and AE are congruent because when I'm drawing a median, I'm drawing from a midpoint to the angle opposite. AF would have to be congruent to CF, again, because we got medians. And then CG would have to be congruent to BG, because all of these points outside are midpoints that I connect to the angle opposite. Now, the interesting thing about a centroid is that it kind of as a centroid splits my median into two parts and those two parts are related to each other by half now if I'm thinking about the whole line and just part of it then it's actually related by a third or two-thirds because like there's one part two parts for a total of three parts um, but then this little piece is equal to half of that piece so the distance from the centroid to the vertex of the triangle is two-thirds the entire median that's what this is saying but we can also think of it another way so AD would be like double DG or I can think of it as two-thirds of AG so different ways to think about it um, ED would be half of DC so if I took half of DC I could get ED or another way to think about it is that it's the smaller piece so one-third of EC so two different ways to think about it depending on what information I'm already given BD since that's the longer piece is two-thirds the entire thing BF or Again, I could think of this as double DF. Um, DG is the smaller piece of the median. So I can think of that as half of AD, the longer piece, or since it's a smaller, a third of the whole thing, 
AG. DC is the longer piece, or it's like to the vertex, so that would be two-thirds of the whole thing, EC. Or I can think of it as double the smaller piece. And then DF, that's the smaller one. So it's either half of the larger part, BD, or a third of the whole thing, BF. Again, depending on what information you're given. No matter what, again, the centroid will always be inside the triangle, kind of like the um, in center because of how it's drawn. Like I have to draw median to angle, like I have to connect them. And so because I'm always connecting things inside of the triangle, the centroid would have to be inside, like it couldn't not be. So whether you are acute, right, or obtuse, your centroid will always be in the center. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm just finding the middle and then kind of connecting it to the angle opposite. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, so I'm finding the middle and then connecting to the angle opposite and then finding the middle, connecting to the angle opposite. And then find the middle, connect to the angle opposite, middle. Oh, that was bad middle. My God. <laughs> and then middle. Yeesh. See, if you do a bad job, they don't overlap like you want them to. That's so bad. Now, another fun fact about the centroid. Oh, I should have grabbed it. Dang it. Hopefully I remember during class and I'll show you. Um, I have this triangle that I cut out on a piece of cardboard um, because the centroid is also your center of balance. So like if I put my finger on the centroid only, then the triangle, like cardboard triangle, will balance on my finger. If I put it on any other point of concurrency, it won't do that. So that's really interesting. This is your center of balance. They're all different types of centers, but that's kind of unique that it's the balance point. None of the other ones are. All right, last but not least, I'm sorry, I know this video is so long, but we can skip around. So when I draw all three altitudes, I get a point of concurrency called the orthocenter. And guys, Last but not least, the orthocenter is kind of the least interesting of the bunch. Like it doesn't have that much unique stuff. So again, because point D, our orthocenter, is created with the altitudes, we know that angle A, E, D will be 90. It's also equal to the one on the other side, but that's because these are altitudes. Um, C, F, D will be 90. And again, also equal on the other side. And then angle BGD will be 90 or equal to the one on the other side. And then there's kind of no mathy thing about it. Like this is super mathy where we can take half for a third or two thirds. Or with the circumcenter, we could walk that equidistant in center, we could walk the equidistant to the sides. But the orthocenter doesn't have any mathy fact. The only sort of interesting thing about it, it's kind of like the circumcenter where if it's acute, the orthocenter will be inside. So again, if I drop it down perpendicularly, drop it down perpendicularly, and then drop it down perpendicularly, orthocenter, um, inside. If it's right, this one's kind of interesting and I like to use color because if I start at this angle and I need to drop down perpendicularly, like I already have that. And same thing here. And so really where your altitudes are crossing is right on the right angle. So on a right triangle, it's right on the right angle. Now with the circumcenter, it also did that, but that one was on the hypotenuse, so a little different. And then when it's an obtuse triangle, like a circumcenter, it will be outside the triangle. 
and the way that this one kind of works like I can drop this down perpendicularly very easy but and I kind of always have to turn this to see it for this guy here I have to sort of add a little tail to my triangle to get this to drop down perpendicularly and similarly for this one I need to kind of extend my triangle out like add a little tail so that we get this altitude perpendicular and even then you still kind of can't see your point of concurrency you really need to extend these lines out So now if I extend out these altitudes, eventually they will all intersect outside of the triangle. Oh, if I did a better job, it would look better. I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right, so no mathy stuff about that one. Just kind of a fun fact that inside, outside, around is a thing. And I'm so sorry if this video is so long, but remember we can skip around.